So I'm going to show you how to use ChatGPT as a sort of tutor for Python interview questions. So let's say you want to become a Python developer and you go and you look at a list of interview questions like I have up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to feed those to ChatGPT and we're going to start with an initial prompt that says, hey, I'm going to give you some Python interview questions. Help me understand how to answer these questions with in-depth code examples, comments, and deep explanations that are easy to understand for someone who has not been programming for that long. And then I'll say respond with yes if you understand this. This is like an easy way to have the prompt uh, feedback and be like, okay, yep, good to go. Uh, if anything happens with ChatGPT while you're using the free version where it stalls out like this or something just doesn't seem to work, feel free to just copy your prompt, refresh the page, and just go again. I know a lot of you have probably been dealing with showing up to ChatGPT and seeing that it's down. That's how you deal with that. Like I said, we got the response of yes. Let's go ahead and start feeding some of these interview questions in and let's use ChatGPT to actually help us become a faster learner. We can ask it certain questions about the interview questions that will help us understand how to better uh, angle against the problem. So let's say this, I've got a, a question right here. I'm just gonna take this. So let's say that we get asked in an interview, what is the uh, differentiation between a to list and a tuple? So we'll just throw that in there and let's see what chat gives us. So I think that we're, what we asked for is we said let's see some code and let's see some explanation so we're going to be looking for that here and then we can ask questions to have it expand on that until our knowledge is at a point where we feel really good one thing we can also do is we can take this code put it in a notebook or something like that and then keep that to ourselves so that way we can be more prepared and we can actually have some examples if anybody wants to see and on top of that we should be able to articulate the knowledge and then also um uh, modify the code as well. So we have some explanations here, we have some code, and what we can ask now is we can say, hey, can you show me an example uh, of how we might parse or loop through the data of a list or a tuple differently? And so we're actually asking for more explanation of how you actually get into a list or how you get into a tuple and how you pull that data out. It gave some extremely uh, basic ways that you can do that where you could reference the index um, or you could just pr you could say hey well, I just want to print this specific um, item and things of that nature and how you could you could add to the list but we say hey how do we actually uh, get into it so this could help us where we're in an interview right and we're saying not only the just the basic differences between a list and a tuple but we're also saying okay in a list if you want to loop through um, everything in a list you could say uh, for fruit and fruits print fruit and then for a tuple uh, we could say for fruit and fruits print fruit I think that we're still looking at basically the same thing here um, but basically the syntax being uh, these guys right here versus these guys it's the curly versus the square brackets so uh, and we have some more examples coming down here right so um, use this as a tutor right this is something that we can we can really tap into i think we're going to move on to another interview question and see how it handles that so this question i think this is really um good let's take this one this seems like a pretty complex one i'd like to see what code examples this gives and so um we're going to go ahead and just say hey stop generating go ahead and throw this in here and so i'll say is python a compiled language or an interpreted language so i think this is leaning into the more like theoretical side of Python, I actually want to see if it could um, not only explain to me the difference, but then give me any code to explain the difference in what that would look like. I don't know if it can, but I'm curious to see where it goes. So I'm actually asking it um, after this, he gave me this explanation. I said, could you give me any code that could highlight the difference between what you said Python is, which is said it was an interpreted language versus uh, any example of a compiled language. So uh, so like C or C++. So I'm actually looking for it to give me a code example that could show me like Python versus C++ or just show um, a similar function in Python or C++. So in the interview, maybe what I can do is I can say, hey, here's your Python, but then here's also some, uh, com some uh, code of a compiled language and actually just point to a literal example. So, um, so this is a really good one because actually going down here and saying, um, here's your interpreter, and then in C++, 
here's how the code work for that. And then here is how uh, this compiler would work, right? Okay, so we're, we're actually diving into the nuances of Python versus other programming languages and it's feeding things out to you. And we could continue to ask this, whatever um, questions just come to mind here. So let's go ahead and actually grab another interview question. So I like this one. What's the difference between a mutable and an immutable data type? So let's actually run that one in here. And let's see if it gives us some code examples. Sometimes it is a little bit slow in the beginning. I do encourage you to just refresh, get in there. If it stalls out, um, just give, just be patient because a lot of people are using ChatGPT right now. You also have the opportunity to upgrade to Plus, which I think they're giving priority to people who are using ChatGPT Plus. Right now, I'm seeing a price for about $20 a month. So if that's worth it to you, you can go ahead and, and you know spend that. And I think that some of the uh, lag and all that type of stuff will actually go away. And as you can see, we did get an error. Now, we'll go ahead and regenerate the response. We just need to be patient because it is working pretty hard for us, especially on the free version. Cool, so I really just quickly refreshed, came back here, and so let's see what this example brings us, right? So we have a, a nice text explanation here, and then it's gonna give us an example, and I think we're gonna get into, uh, into code. And so it's saying, hey, a mutable data type is a list, and then we can modify that list after it's been created. And then let's see what it gives us for immutable. And we could always ask it to to provide different uh, information for its examples so that it doesn't look so generic. So we could actually say, hey, could you um, go ahead and, and give us some some better diff different examples is not fruit, you know? Hey, can we, can we make this a uh, people that have um, salaries? It's like a HR data set or something like that. ChatGPT is really good at creating data sets and you could always ask it for things like that and see what it comes up with. Okay, cool. So we have a uh, we have tuple versus list, and then I'll say, can you give me uh, give me uh, two more code examples? Because maybe I just am not fully getting it. And let's just say, hey, can you can you just expand on that? Can you um, reach into what you know about Python and then pull that out and then give me two more code examples? Because it's just not clicking quite yet. So any time that you need to spend mulling over a certain uh, problem like ChatGPT is just functioning as your tutor in this sense to get you ready for this these interview questions um, and it's just giving you examples all the way up and down of how this all works great so it gave us more examples and it actually gave us some code that would result in an error if we tried it and I accidentally hit web search and so um, this is just a really good example because it shows us what works and then it actually shows us what would not work and then it explains the reason why to reach back to the initial question. Let's go ahead and grab another interview question and look and see what it can do for us on that one. This question, it's what is pickling and unpickling, right? So um, I've never heard this terminology before so I'm actually interested to see what the answer is to this one myself because if somebody asked me this in an interview i would have no idea what on earth this is saying and um with this right since i don't know this information i really encourage you to go ahead and test all this code make sure that it does and does not work right keep it in um, actually know how to execute the examples that it's giving you because the syntax may or may not be all you know correct especially for more advanced applications of code I found it to sometimes have some syntax errors or make up packages or functions that actually don't exist but would be a really cool idea if it did exist, right? And that's one of the cool things about AI is that it's actually extrapolating some things um, that don't exist but it's actually helping us towards maybe uh, one day creating those functions. But overall, you don't want to be misinformed by ChatGPT because it just had a little bit of a, a screw up and then have to deal with that, right? So uh, for pickling, okay, let's look at this. So serialize and deserialize objects, interesting. Uh, byte stream, transmitted over a network, allows you to save the state of an object so it can be restored later. That's really interesting. Okay, so it sounds like you would put it in this thing called a PKL file. Then you would put your data in there, and then you would unpack it and load it. And then you would print the restored object interesting um, so 
one thing I'd like to know is what is serialized and deserialized um, about it. I'll say what is serialized about this data. And I, I'm going to ask him, like, what do you what do you mean it's serialized? Because to me, that means like serial number. That means like a unique identification, like a primary key. And in this example, they didn't really provide anything like that. They just said that it is serialized. So to me, I don't actually really understand this. So um, I would hate to walk into an interview and tell somebody that this is what pickling and unpickling is and then not actually understand what the serialization aspect of what was said actually means, right? So let's look here. Um, so it actually just said that the serialization happens when it's basically encoded and transmitted. And to me, I'm asking, um, you know, if I can see more context to one of the things that it said, a, a byte stream. And it says it's a linear representation of the original Python object. So I'd actually like to see if that's if there's an actual thing I can see. I'd like to see what that actually looks like. And then it says, can you give code examples of any of this? Um, I'd like to see what it would look like to print out um, whatever the actual content of the, the pickle file is. <clears throat> now this is just, these are just my questions that I'm kind of spinning up as I'm learning this and you'll have different ones, but know that you can go, you know, five, six, seven layers deep into these questions until you gain the understanding. But this is the same situation as having a tutor who's a Python expert right next to you and you're asking them questions and uh, it's faster, right? And it's, it's more capable than um, probably even that Python expert because this is tapping into like all the Python knowledge on the entire internet and then giving you a regurgitation of that. So um, this is where this becomes really, really powerful. And this is where you can learn like 10 times faster. And my experience is like 10 times faster. All right, so it actually just now spit out a really literal example of what I was asking for. So it's saying that it's uh, building a byte stream and I wanted to know what that is. So it actually showed me if I have a string that I can do something called string.encode and then it'll actually print out the byte stream here. So it actually is showing me the core component of what it's saying that it is doing with that Python list. So I'm gonna say, uh, do this with a Python list and show me the output example of the byte stream. Because what I'm more interested in is how it took all of that data and then uh, pushed it back out, right? So um, we're gonna reload this real fast. All right, cool, so it did it with a list. And what's really interesting about this is that it's showing me the byte stream of the list. And I'm actually fascinated because I've never actually seen this before. So it's actually printing out all of these symbols in this slash X zero zero, um, you know, all of these numbers with, with X's and letters and all this different stuff. So that is, fascinating so I think that's where the encoding is actually happening of the data and it's probably gonna burn out and stop generating but ultimately now I know at the core level this is what a byte stream looks like these are I guess the bytes right um, and I can actually ask that too so I could say um, right here um, are these the and I'll put it in quotes bytes I'll push that in, say stop generating, push that in, and see if, yes, those are the bytes, right? So now I can say, um, if I'm articulating this in a um, in an interview, I'm getting really deep in my level of complexity. I'm saying, hey, these are the bytes. This is how um, the data is, is transferred. Here's what's actually in here. Whenever you uh, pickle and depickle a list, then I'm exhibiting a really deep level of understanding to that interviewer of my Python knowledge. And, you know, we're learning this here on the fly um, with that. So I could go on and on with these interview questions. Now, one thing I could do is if I wanted to go and find some existing interview questions like I just did and then put them into ChatGP, I can do that. Or I can just simply say, hey, uh, create 10 interview questions and then um, 
test me on them. Or I could say like, hey, uh, just give me explanations on these one by one, right? So uh, it's probably gonna be pulling those from some collection that I found on the internet. So it's gonna be, you know, pre-2021 Googling, basically it's you know, all the text that it's ever received on Python interview questions and then providing that to you. So kind of however you wanna do it, it just I just wanna show you all, this is something that you can use for a variety of industries, uh, coding languages, you definitely use it for Python. You can use it to become sharper, more hireable, more skilled, however you wanna do it. And if you've watched the video to this point, um, I really appreciate it. Hope this was helpful. And um, if you have any thoughts, drop them in the comments. But if not, have a good one.